There's ancient flip phones, the hot Jessica Biel, and this mother I'd love to fu- Ah, oh, never mind. Hey, this is Fred with Popcorn Recap, and today we will be recapping a suspense thriller called Cellular. Before we start, be sure to like the video, drop a comment, and of course, subscribe to the channel if you dig the summary. The movie begins with Jessica Martin, a high school biology teacher, escorting her son Ricky to the school bus. When she gets home, unknown criminals break in through the back door, murder her housemate, abduct her, and imprison her in their safe house attic. Meanwhile, Ryan, a young man, hangs out with his friend Chad at the Santa Monica Pier when Ryan runs across his ex, Chloe, who dumped him. He promises to help with the fundraiser being held there in hopes of getting back with her. Woo-wee. Chloe is a fine piece of vanilla pudding. He eventually assigns Chad to pass out the flyers until he comes with the t-shirts. Ryan then proceeds to his car and drives off. Meanwhile, Ethan, the gang leader, breaks the only phone in the attic with a sledgehammer to prevent Jessica from calling anybody. Jessica has no idea who or what the kidnappers are after. Maybe they're after her goodies. She reassembles the damaged phone to create a connection at random. She eventually reaches Ryan's phone. On his way, Ryan receives a call on his phone from Jessica, who informs him that she has been abducted. He laughs it off, but Jessica persuades him to go to the cops and report the kidnapping. Ryan eventually informs Sergeant Bob Mooney about the kidnapping. Ryan lets Jessica talk to Mooney. However, a brawl breaks out between cops and gang members. Mooney steps in and urges Ryan to report the kidnapping to the detectives on the fourth floor. Following this, Ryan can't find anyone on the way up, and if he keeps going, he'll lose the call due to a bad phone connection. While they are conversing over the phone, Jessica hears someone entering the attic. She immediately hides the phone under the carpet. Ethan enters the attic and confronts Jessica with a question she is unaware of. When Jessica admits she has no idea, he informs her that he will take her son. Overhearing them, Ryan becomes aware of the seriousness of the kidnapping. Eventually, Jessica instructs Ryan to go to her son Ricky's school before they do after Ethan departs. Ryan arrives at the school, asking Jessica over the phone what her son looks like. After Jessica tells how Ricky looks, Ryan tries to find him. He enters a classroom, but Ricky is not there. After a moment, a school security officer asks him to wait at the parents' waiting area. However, Ryan cannot pay attention to the school security officer since he is talking to Jessica over the phone. Eventually, Jessica tells Ryan that her Ricky uses the Lord of the Rings backpack. Ryan spots Ricky. Unfortunately, Ricky is already opening the kidnapper's car door. Ryan tries to call Ricky. When Ricky turns around, one of the kidnappers grabs him inside the car. Ryan moves quickly. He tells the school security that he will borrow the security car. Even the school security officer refuses. Ryan already runs to the security car and drives off pursuing the kidnappers. Following this, Ryan drives to the store to get a charger for his phone since the battery is almost dead. After being passed on from counter to counter to get a number and get in line, he then uses a revolver from the security car to hold up the business at gunpoint and finally buys the charger. Meanwhile, Mooney decides to investigate the kidnapping report he got. He utilizes the Department of Motor Vehicles data to locate Jessica's residence, but when he arrives, a lady greets him, claiming to be Jessica and assuring him that everything is alright. Mooney then exits, believing the kidnapping is a false alarm. Dana Payback, who appears to be the kidnapper's accomplice, watches as Mooney leaves the residences. She eventually informs Ethan. Following this, Ethan returns to the attic and asks Jessica for the address of the left field, the spot where her husband Craig was last seen. Ethan then reveals to Jessica through a window in the attic that he has Ricky imprisoned in the shed and threatens to murder him unless Jessica reveals what his knowledge means to her. Ethan then learns that left field is a pub in the Lax airport as Jessica explains it to him. As Ethan walks away, Jessica informs Ryan that they are on their way to pick up Craig. A cross connection between phone lines suddenly threatens the carrier signal. A lawyer is on the phone with his mother. Ryan struggles to communicate with Jessica. The stubborn lawyer interferes with their connection, telling them to get off the line and making fun of Jessica being kidnapped. Eventually, Ryan is cut off from the line. Fortunately, Ryan is able to locate the lawyer. Ryan stops the security car in front of the lawyer's car. He gets out of the security car and threatens the lawyer to give him his phone. A truck suddenly smashes the security car, making Ryan borrow the lawyer's car. Ryan drives off as Jessica instructs Ryan to go to Lax and look for Craig. Eventually, Ryan tries to stop the kidnappers at the airport by concealing his revolvers in one of their bags as they pass through the security. But when they are captured, they disclose that they are cops. This alerts Ryan and Jessica to the fact that Ethan and his posse are dishonest cops. Ryan then discovers a man who appears to be Jessica's husband, but he is not the actual Craig. 
After this, Ryan sees the actual Craig, and he is about to approach him when he sees the kidnapper already close to Craig. The kidnappers eventually bring Craig with them. After this, Ryan discovers the police have impounded the lawyer's car as he exits the airport. Ryan loudly exclaims, making the police notice him. Ryan begins to walk away as the police follow him. Fortunately, he eventually lost the police. Meanwhile, a slew of weird instances has made the headlines, including a gunman who buys a cell phone charger and overpays for it, as well as an interview with a lawyer who claims his car was taken by a man claiming to be on his way to save a woman called Jessica Martin. Meanwhile, Mooney recognizes Ryan after hearing the news. He then contacts Jessica's house and receives her voicemail, but this time, he realizes that Jessica's voice and accent on the answering machine are not the same as the lady who claimed to be her. Following this, Craig is dragged into the attic and compelled to divulge where the recording is hidden. He then tells them it is in his safe deposit box at Centurion Bank, but they need him to fetch it. Jessica acts a bit crazy before they leave, whispering in Craig's ear that he will have assistance at the bank. While another kidnapper keeps watching, Ethan and his companions Dimitri and Deason accompany Craig. Ryan also makes it to the bank through a taxi ride. Craig gets the camcorder from his safety deposit box. Eventually, after failing to take Craig with him, the kidnappers attempt to get the camcorder but Ryan knocks down Dimitri, snatches the camera and runs to the roof alone. Ethan follows Ryan with a gun. After a moment of Ryan hiding from Ethan, he sees a dump hole. As he slips through it, he drops the lawyer's phone off the roof, shattering it. Eventually, he is able to flee in a taxi cab after instructing the driver to take him to the Los Angeles Police Department auto impound. On his way inside the taxi, he examines the videos in the camcorder. It shows that Craig accidentally recorded a video of Los Angeles Police Department. Ethan, Mad Dog, Dimitri, Bayback, Deason, and Jack Tanner, a buddy of Mooney, robbing and killing drag traffickers while collecting video footage of properties for his realtor work. Meanwhile, at the auto impound, the receptionist is preoccupied with the lawyer who is trying to get his car back without paying a charge. On the other hand, Ryan gets off at the impound lot and slips in. As the lawyer agrees to pay the charge, Ryan takes the lawyer's car again. He then retrieves his phone, which is inside the lawyer's car. Ryan is glad to see that Jessica's call is still on hold. He then drives off. Following this, Mooney comes back to Jessica Martin's house. He knocks multiple times, but no one answers. Mooney gets in the house through the backyard. He then finds the broken back door. He calls out that he is a cop as a warning. However, he is shot by Bayback. The shot instantly injures him. He retaliates by distracting and shooting Bayback, letting her bleed, only to discover, much to his dismay, that she was also a cop. Mooney calls for paramedics, but Bayback is already dead. Meanwhile, Jessica tries to wire the broken phone again to contact Ryan. She eventually succeeds but unfortunately contacts the phone downstairs. Mad Dog answers the phone and hears Jessica's voice on the other line. Mad Dog rages and goes upstairs. He throws Jessica into a mirror which instantly breaks. As Mad Dog continues to hurt Jessica, she grabs a piece of mirror and is driven to murder him by slashing his brachial artery before Mad Dog can kill her, forcing him to bleed and die in seconds. Eventually, Jessica runs to the shed to get Ricky. However, the kidnapper arrives at the safe house. Jessica hides from them. Jessica tells Ricky to move from the windows as the kidnappers enter the house. Meanwhile, Ethan discovers that Mad Dog is dead and Jessica escapes. Jessica then gets in the car and slams the car into the shed. The shed instantly breaks, freeing Ricky. Jessica tells Ricky to get in the car. Ricky hurriedly enters the car. As they try to flee, Ethan appears in front of the car with Craig as a hostage and prevents Jessica from driving off. Ethan tells Jessica to get out of the car. Jessica jumps off the car. Ethan is furious with Jessica and demands to know who the boy in the bank is while pointing a gun at her. Before Ethan can react, Ryan utilizes the memory on his phone to call Ethan and negotiate a bargain over the phone. Ryan requests the video footage in exchange for the Martin family. Eventually, Tanner persuades Mooney to postpone his ride to the hospital for sutures after learning about the meeting so that he might identify Ryan, whom Mooney still suspects as a primary suspect. Eventually, the exchange takes place on the Santa Monica Pier. Ryan tries to handle things covertly, but his ex-girlfriend unwittingly exposes him, allowing Mooney to identify him. Following this, Tanner brings Ryan to Ethan while sending Dimitri to assist Mooney with his medical needs. Ethan smashes the vigilante, and Tanner gives the order to murder the Martins, despite Deason's advice in the vehicle to wait until they get at the safe house. On the other hand, Mooney overhears Dimitri's radio transmission and learns that Tanner has been one of the kidnappers. Dimitri tries to murder Mooney, but Mooney overpowers him and cuffs him. Meanwhile, Chad sees Ryan and tries to talk to him. 
Eventually, Ryan manages to flee by jumping off the bridge to the waters. Ryan swims and runs to the boathouse while Tanner runs after him. In a boathouse, Tanner faces Ryan, who knocks Tanner down with a surfboard, but Ethan appears and shoots the surfboard. Ethan then beats Ryan up with his better fighting abilities until Mooney intervenes. After a prolonged cat and mouse chase, Ryan, who is injured, observes that Ethan has circled behind Mooney and attempts to help Mooney by dialing Ethan's phone number. Mooney instantly shoots Ethan dead when the ring of Ethan's phone exposes his hiding position. As Ethan falls, he stares at Ryan, perplexed. Ryan gets out of the boathouse and runs to the van where the Martin family are. Meanwhile, Jessica strangles Dizon with her handcuffed chain from the back of the van then frees her husband and kid. On the other hand, Dizon is just taken aback and about to fire his weapon at them. Fortunately, Ryan appears, breaks the driver's seat window, and slams him into the car multiple times. Dizon eventually falls to the ground, knocking him out. Jessica calls Ryan. Ryan is relieved to see Jessica. With this, Jessica approaches Ryan and embraces him. After this, while the paramedics are attending Ryan and Mooney, the police seize Tanner, who tries to convince Mooney that he has nothing to do with it. However, Ryan exposes him to Mooney. He reveals that he had copied the camcorder footage onto his phone. The police proceed in escorting Tanner to their car. The movie ends with the Martin family safe and free. Jessica again approaches Ryan, who has put his life on the line to save her and her family. Ryan, who is with Chloe, also approaches Jessica. As they are closer to each other, Jessica kisses Ryan on the cheek. Jessica tells Ryan that she doesn't know what she could do to pay him back for helping her. Ryan jokingly says that she should never contact him again, and they both laugh at it. Subscribe for more videos like this. Turn on notifications and leave a like. It really helps the channel.